the benchmark. I can tell you for sure this visit was a completely different level. This was the only time, that only time where a, pri a Prime Minister of India has addressed a joint session of the Congress twice. No other Prime Minister of India uh, has ever done this. Business has always held back in America where India was concerned. This time, you know, you had from, uh, you know, Tim Cook to Elon Musk to Satya Nadella to Sundar Pichai, an agreement on jet engine, 8,000 people. The, uh, for the uh, on the road for the for the White House uh, uh, opening ceremony. I the first visit I was associated with. I didn't go there for that visit. Was Mrs. Gandhi's visit to USA in 1982. The first visit where I was physically present in Washington was Rajiv Gandhi's visit in 1985. Uh, and uh, if you look at all the visits that have happened thereafter, generally speaking. You know, people would, if people said, okay, what were the three big visits in our history? People would have said Narendra Modi's visit in 2014, the Madison Square Garden visit. Uh, they would have said the Dr. Manmohan Singh visit where the nuclear deal would have been done. And probably they would have said Rajiv Gandhi's visit because he tried really to smoothen out ties. He was there in Washington for each of these three visits. So with those three visits as a kind of benchmark, I can tell you for sure this visit was a completely different level. And there are many ways by which I can uh, sort of demonstrate to you that, you know, that it was a different level. Because, say, in diplomacy, one easy yardstick is protocol. Uh, this was only the second state visit of an Indian prime minister. That the only other state visit which has ever happened before was Dr. Manmohan Singh in 2009. Secondly, this was the only time that only time where a, pri a Prime Minister of India has addressed a joint session of the Congress twice. No other Prime Minister of India uh, has ever done this. In fact, there are only four other people, two of them were Israelis, but other than that, I think only Nelson Mandela and Winston Churchill have addressed uh, the joint session more than once. But it wasn't just this, you know. Uh, we were, for example, in Washington uh, for uh, three days. On each of these days, the President of the United States uh, was with the Prime Minister in a program. I mean, he was there for a private dinner on the first day in the White House. He was there through the official program, which was the second day. On the third day, he came for what was called a tech uh, round table, uh, which was out there. The First Lady, uh, Jill Biden, she too had an event with the Prime Minister. You know, an uh, event on a matter which was very dear to her heart, which was on skills and uh, community colleges. There were six cabinet members who attended, uh, you know, prime ministers. I mean, even, even his uh, uh, with a mix of uh, business leaders. You had the Secretary of State and the U.S. Trade Representative out there. So one part of it was, you know, the presence, the, the attention, the, the, the kind of a, uh, not just the administration. If you look today uh, in a very polarized capital, uh, we were made as welcome by the Republicans as by the Democrats. It was the Republican Speaker uh, of the House who extended the invitation for the joint session uh, of Congress. I mean, obviously, with, with the Democrats also uh, agreeing to it. Uh, and one constituency, you know, which has historically been very skeptical about India, was business. Because in all these visits I talked to you about, you know, the 2005 visit, the 1980, business has always held back in America where India was concerned. This time, you know, you had from, uh, you know, Tim Cook to Elon Musk to Satya Nadella to Sundar Pichai, I mean, I could, to the Boeing guy, to the GE guy, I mean, you look actually at the, uh, at the levels and seriousness of the business interaction. Not just at the interaction, look at the outcomes which have come out of it. You know, uh, you know uh, an, an agreement on jet engine is something which is technology is held perhaps even closer than nuclear technology. It's very, very rare for a country to actually have an understanding to uh, share jet engine technology. Similarly, if you look at the outcomes even on semiconductors and you all understand today the importance Conductors, it is really the key metric uh, on how to compete today.
had a whole series of agreements from Micron to LAM Research, uh, which uh, to apply done deals. These are done deals with uh, funds committed, locations made, ready to go, which you will see coming up uh, in the next few months.